Hello everyone, uh, it's me, I'm back again for another Neurographica slash art therapy or therapeutic art lesson. Um, today I am going to share with you another technique that has been used in art therapy that I have converted into Neurographica and hopefully it would help uh, you in some therapeutic way. Now, having said that, even though um, all art, including Neurographica, has therapeutic properties, it is not a replacement for any um, professional that you may be seeing at the moment. Any professional therapist, counselor, psychologist, or psychiatrist that you may be talking to or seeing at the moment, please continue those sessions. Neurographica and the lessons that are recorded in this, in all my videos here are not meant to be replacement for your own therapy sessions, for, own, for your own professional therapy sessions, please. It's probably better to use them as a stopgap between your therapy sessions uh, or for your own personal soothing if you're not seeing any therapies uh, if you're not seeing any therapies or counselors for that matter so uh, having said that I'm going to get on with it so what you see in front of you on your screen now is actually an exercise in, from art therapy where you do a whole bunch of doodle, doodle. actually um, it's a duel between more than one person, but today, oh, okay, not more than one person, but when I did this picture that's in front of you right now, um, there were like four people in the class, and this piece of paper was being handed around the table to do some random doodles on and then everybody had a piece of paper so we had like four pieces of paper floating around the class doodling okay and this is the result of the doodling um, and from this um, this this was my personal piece there are other pieces uh, from the other students but they are all different they all look very different so this piece was uh, the one that I have and from this mess of lines, we get this. So I, I, I was actually trying to capture images of what I saw in the doodle here. And then I just sort of painted, paint the images. So I did this in Photoshop. Now for this, this session, do not use any computer uh, electronic means to do this. In fact, most of all my video tutorials should not be done via electronic means. It should be done on paper. Okay, color pencils, pencils, markers, and paper. Any painting medium, traditional painting medium on paper. You should never do any therapeutic stuff via the computer because the feeling is different the media the medium is different okay the medium of computer human to computer interaction is completely different than how a traditional art medium would feel on a piece of paper or on whatever uh, specialist kind of paper specialist kind of paper that you would be using all right so please, 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 please do not do any Neurographica or art therapy things related stuff on the computer even though you may, your computer may be set up for it because it does different things, okay? It will not work the same part of the brain as traditional mediums would, all right? that's the warning I can give you and having said that if you still insist on 
using your computer for your neurographical sessions or your art therapy sessions or your own personal therapy sessions, then I can't stop you, you know? But the results will be different. You've been warned. And so in any case, I'll leave on that note and then we can continue with our sessions, all right? So from this piece of doodle, we got this. All right, so today I am going to teach you how to do something like this, this th but using Neurographic method. And this was done on Photoshop. But we're not doing Photoshop with Neurographica. We never ever do Photoshop on Neurographica, please. All right? So now we're back to the old drawing board. Oh, sorry, I was using this as a focus for the camera. So what we are using today is mostly markers and whatever coloring medium that you want to use. Our usual uh, medium of choice is always the marker. Now you can use fine point markers or broad point or whatever you want. All right. So before you start, if you were agitated for whatever reason, clear your mind first before you start this exercise. Um, you can clear your mind by doing deep breathing exercises so you can calm down a little and then you can start this exercise because out of this exercise remember it's a whole whole mess of doodles and you get images out of it and those images are what your creative psyche is trying to tell you a message from your inner inner self all right so it's a very it's a projective means so we're using i we're using Neurographic method to achieve that today. And I think if you've been following my video sessions, you've probably seen like um, a good part of it in the, in the fixations where, you're supposed to, where you see images. So this is like totally all on that today. Okay, so it's a art therapy method, art per therapy projective method of doing art and I am using neurographical method to do that today so you'll see you'll see okay so first of all we're gonna be switching hands today so just just a word of fair warning to all of you out there who are watching this, we're going to be using both hands today. So first, use your master hand. And what you want to do is do not think. Okay? Do not think when you're doing this exercise. Draw whatever that comes to mind. And using only neurographic method as in neurographic lines and neurographic shapes that's it nothing else no flowers fishes or whatever I know you saw you, you might have seen a couple of flowers in there and all that but that's art therapy method okay neurographic is different so today we're doing neurographic method of a, pro a projective way of getting your psyche to give you some message so you start by just randomly drawing neurographic lines slowly start off very slowly okay you want to get into that meditative state first so for the next five minutes use your master hand to draw neuro random neurographic lines only random neurographic lines for the first five minutes. So here we go. Do not think about anything, just 
go ahead and start drawing and do it very slowly because we want to get into that meditative calm state. Okay, this is the first time I'm doing this too, so you're not alone if you're doing this. You're thinking that this is your first time, it's my first time too. So I'm not thinking, I'm just kind of going to draw intuitively. Of course, you have to do your neurographica line method of drawing where, you know, if you want to go up, you go down the opposite way instead. But otherwise, it's more or less just intuitive because if you would let go and say okay well I feel like I want to go this way and I want to go that way then you might see a whole bunch of similar lines like I explained in my first session my first video session here I think I'm drawing a little too fast here, so I'm going to slow down a bit. Now you're free to draw shapes, circles, triangles, squares wherever you feel like it. At this point, I don't feel like I want to draw any circles or any shapes at the moment. When I do, I will draw it. And it's okay to switch hands later. Okay, so five minutes up, we're switching hands. We're going with your non-master hand to draw now. Okay, so again, the same thing. You're only drawing neurographic lines. I know you can't draw shapes with your non-master hand. So if you have to draw shapes, uh, you can switch hands and draw some shapes. Again, when you're drawing shapes, don't think. Don't think like, yeah, I think I want a shape here. I think I want a circle there. No. If you feel like there needs to be a circle there, do it. 
if you like there's a square there do it and when you draw squares and triangles you know what you need to do with the with the sharp corners okay so um, and when do you stop you stop when you feel like there's a whole mess of lines okay you feel like okay you need to stop uh, it, it the whole pitch should basically look like a whole mess of lines and yes it would be a real challenge to round later so be prepared all right but it'll be fun so I'm using my left hand now to draw If you find that you have a sharp corner in one of your neurographic lines when you're using your non-master hand to do your neuro lines then just try to round it off with that same hand okay see like this here Don't uh, bother about rounding at the moment. Just keep drawing your lines. So I'm using a sheet of A4 size paper. I would encourage you to use a bigger sheet of paper on your own later if you want. Now if you see sharp corners again, you can also leave it to later to round it off for your neural lines. Or if you don't want that, then you can try to round it with your non-master hand. Like this. But with intersections, I encourage you to wait till um, you're done.
So you might notice that I am pausing to look at the drawing for a little bit because I'm looking at where can I draw the lines instead of thinking uh, where to draw what. Alright, so I feel like I want to draw a circle here for whatever reason. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Okay, you can draw small, small circles too, like little bubbles if you want to, like this. And if you want to draw circles floating in the middle somewhere like this, that is fine too. Okay, I'm feeling like I need a square here for whatever reason, I don't know. Alright, so I feel like I need a couple more lines here using my master hand at the moment. do not have to go from end to end they can end like this you just have to round them later okay Alright, so next step is just rounding. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward the video for rounding and I will talk to you again after that. Alright, I'll see you later.
Hello, so I'm back. I'm done rounding the doodle that I've done. And the next step, it's probably one of the harder, harder steps to have because the next steps involve looking for images, recognizable images. Now, a word of warning here is um, you may take some time to locate images, recognizable images or symbols um, for you to identify and color them. So take your time, there's no rush, but in the interest of recording a reasonably length video, reasonable length video, um, I do not have the luxury of time to like, you know, look at this piece of doodle for the next 30 minutes and say, ah, yes, this is what I see here and we can color. Um, I don't have that luxury, but you on the other hand, who's watching this and trying this method out, do, and do, please take your time. It takes you an hour to look at your doodle and see something and then color it please do so don't do so on the account of this video okay so do it for yourself so of course in my case um, I've split this session this recording session into two sessions so um, I come in right now with already a predetermined um, image or images in mind that I've already seen, seen before I started recording this video. So um, through the magic of um, video recording, you get instantaneous answers, okay? So right now, I'm just gonna go through briefly on how, how you do it. I think if you have seen the previous video, one of my previous video where I teach you for graphical fixation, you turn the art around to see if you can locate any images. It's the same thing, except this will take longer because you have to, you want to find something, okay? And the images or the symbols that you see may be very, very obscure and abstract that it's almost unrecognizable as what they are. So you really do have to take your time relax don't stare at this thing just relax take your time slowly keep turning your doodle round and round and round you know slowly like spend a few minutes looking in one direction and that's 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 what i did and spend like another few minutes looking at it in this direction and maybe you will identify like one or two or even three symbols or images that you recognize okay and then do it and they're, they're like I said they're very um, they are very very abstract I'll, I'll give you an example as I'm, I'm, I'm doing that it's like okay um, I was turning and I know that there's the first two the first two things I saw um, let, hold on let me get a um, white marker or something to show you uh, you don't have to do this if you're doing this because I'm just drawing it out for the purpose of showing you um, like what I saw okay give me a second while I pause the video and then I'll come back okay I'm back with the pen so I'm just gonna highlight the image with uh, this pen so you can see what I'm talking about because black on black is not going to do a whole lot of good all right I'm hoping this works okay so one of the first images I saw was this human figure here and once I outline this figure out you will understand what I mean by really abstract
and I saw a pair of wings here. Okay, I hope the video, yeah, it you can almost see it. So you see it's like a angel figure, and then the next figure I see is this. I think it's a woman because the hair is a little longer, and a pregnant woman. So I don't know if you see it, but... So it's like the figure of um, an angel hanging on or embracing a woman or a pregnant woman. I think it's a pregnant woman because I thought this is the belly. Okay. So that's that's one image that I saw, and then and then after further looking, I saw another image here. Okay. This one. Okay, this person is like flying or dancing in the air, something like that. And then, and then I thought I said, well, there's, you know, there's a triangle here. So I saw a smoking triangle, which at first I thought was like, hmm, a volcano. See, this is the smoke that's coming out of the triangle. Don't know if you can see that. I'm sure you can see the triangle, and then this is the smoke here. Once once I put the color in, it'll be it'll be clearer. So um, yeah, and then I started turning, and I didn't see anything until when I get to this position, and. For some reason, my attention was drawn here, and I couldn't quite figure out why. Because I was looking at this, and I said, okay, well, this looks like the Earth. An abstract representation of the Earth. Okay, but then later, my attention was drawn further up and then into this circle here and then I saw something okay so what I saw was this it's another human figure but this time is the figure of what I thought was a baby playing with a ball or a toddler. Okay. Like a toddler that's playing with a ball.
Okay, and this is the head. The circle is the head. Now, well, how did I know this was like a toddler, you know, like a young or very young child? Because I said if it's a if it's a figure of a human, the size of the head it's proportionally bigger than what an adult has in 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 proportion to the body, and that led me to believe that well, yeah, it's the image of a toddler. It's an abstract representation of a toddler. The hands are here, the feet are here, and then there's this ball, so he's playing with it. Okay, so, so far, I mean, I, I've only spent like maybe 15-20 minutes looking at it. At first I couldn't see anything either, so I just kind of like let it sit and keep looking at it, keep turning the paper, and then I finally saw all these images I'm sure if, if if I'm gonna sit down here and spend more time like the more I look at it the more more um, symbols seem to come out like I don't know where was it but I saw thought I saw something like yeah you see like I'm seeing like a person here it's like waving You know, on 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 this circle, it's waving, and then there's probably another person here that's playing. It feels like he's playing with me, so I'm not sure. Like I'm not absolutely sure. Okay, so I'm gonna outline this circle. Now, uh, you don't have to do this outlining because it's not a requirement. I'm just doing this to show you. So as when when you're doing this, you want to like color as you go. Okay, so you see the there's a person here, it looks like a person here that's playing with a ball okay um, let's see if I can see any more on live recording not it. I thought I see maybe a flower here, but it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna pause the video here to see if I can see any more and then I'll, if I see anything else I will come I will unpause it and let you know. So I think I don't think I can see anything anymore. So I'm going to just start coloring it now and to bring bring the images out more. Um yeah, when it comes to coloring, when you're coloring the images, there are no rules except your own because this is not really neurographic algorithm, 
but later on when you color the outside you may want to apply the regular um, neurographical rules of coloring um, the, the areas outside of the images okay but I would uh, encourage you to not color the outside yet and just color in the images let it sit keep looking at it until you're satisfied that you know you've captured all the um, symbols of the images that you think you have like you know you feel like you've completely captured everything and then you can color the rest of the areas okay Alright, so I'm going to leave um, this as it is um, for a while and I'll post the completed picture on the Facebook page when I'm done with it. Even though I'm not exactly 100% done here, I am going to continue the next step so you guys know what to do. Um, okay, the next step is after you have completed um, identifying all the symbols and the images on this painting give me a sec yeah I had to pause the video to adjust the camera a little bit okay in any case after you've identified all the images the next step is you need to look at all the images one at a time or pairs of it like in this case, like um, when I first saw the this angel and this woman like carrying this woman, um, you would you would have to like ask yourself in this case, um, what does what does this mean to you? Now um, it should be noted that all these images are very personal to you and whatever images that come out because remember I asked you to use your non-master hand um, your non-master hand is not controlled by any logical I mean your it's not it's not controlled by your logical side of the brain especially if you're right-handed if you're left-handed well 
you know, if your master hand is the left hand, then you already your creative side is already already in control. Now I'm right-handed, so when I use my left hand to draw the lines, nothing is telling me, oh yeah, this thing should be here, that thing should be there, this and that. Okay. So when the images come out. All right. Um, each of the images would be, in a manner of speaking, a message from your left side of the brain to you. What this is all about. Okay, so it is up to you to decipher what your creative part of the brain is trying to tell you, and messages can be quite cryptic. So you'd have to decipher them because if you re if you think about um, dreams interpretation, why sometimes you dream stuff that have nothing to do with you know they're not logical at all like what does this mean and what does that mean and all that stuff. But if you think about it, um, sometimes um, they do make sense, but not in the way that you hope to logically. Um, t let me give you an example of. Um, what kind of interpretation we're talking about. Like, um, the best example I can give you is um, there was this method of, um, I don't know how to use this method, but this was a story that I read like a really long time ago in using dreams to solve problems. So, um, what this guy did was he gave all the students attending the lesson um, a problem. The problem he wrote on the on the board. The alphabets from H all the way up to Z. That's what he wrote on the board. Okay? All the way not to Z, sorry. All the way to O. So H I J K L M N O O. That's it. That's what he wrote on the board. And he told his students to go back, sleep on it, and tell him the answer tomorrow. So the next day, everybody in the class reported that they had dreams about water. Okay? And what does, what does that mean? So nobody understood. And this guy said, well, that is the answer to what he wrote on the board the other day. Remember, he wrote on the board, he, he wrote on the board all the alphabets, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O. So the answer to the problem on the board was H-2-O, H-2-O. H2O, H2O is a chemical name for water, H2O. So everybody had a dream about water, so the answer was H2O. So that is how your creative mind will tell you the answers sometimes. So this is just an example. So the all the symbols that you have, that you're seeing on this paper, are answers to something that you're experiencing in life or messages maybe not answers but at the very least messages to you for whatever you're experiencing at the moment or maybe not at the moment but in your life at this point all the things that are salient to you that you're paying attention to okay all, all the things that are going on in your life right now the symbols would be messages to you on what's going on that's really important that's going on right now all right so with that I will end the video um, and I will talk to you again in the mixed video tutorial talk to you later